Welcome to Mind Flow Radio. We are creating conscious community by sharing mindful manifesting skills and transcendental music. We are all in this together. together.
Mindflow Radio. Mindflow Radio. She's Jalen. And he's Monty. And we made it to November. Indeed. Can you believe it? <laughs> yes. Awesome. I feel fortunate to be here. Yeah. Me too. Agreed. Yeah. It's another beautiful day in the neighborhood. Yeah, and as the Stoics put it, any day could be our last. So every day, in from that perspective, is is a a good day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, live mm. life to yeah. its fullest. Any added day, yes. Agreed. Yeah, yeah. yeah so here we are in in our beautiful town of Rioja, and. We're in the the month of November. I think of November as a time of Thanksgiving. Like yeah. Thanksgiving's one of my favorite holidays of yeah. just being grateful and like celebrating gratitude. It's pretty cool. Yeah, if you look at it from that perspective, it's very cool. Yeah. Yeah, and there's there's the gratitude piece and at the beginning of the month is the Dio de los Muertos and just honoring our ancestors. Mm-hmm. In, in the beginning of the Scorpio season, they say the veil is thin. And, mm. you know, we're able to contact our our lineage, our, our guides, our ancestors and honoring their their lives. And I just think it's interesting. What do you think about that? I think perhaps we all have angels <laughs> surrounding <laughs> us. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, that are somehow connected to our ancestors. Mm-hmm. Maybe the ancestors are watching the angels, mm-hmm. some of them. Who knows? I, I got a feeling that the spiritual realm is probably more complicated than we give it credit for. Oh, absolutely. You know, like a hierarchy of beings that uh, yeah i i wonder if that because there's i i always like to hone in on the vein of truth you know, mm-hmm. where different traditions align about yeah. and and that's what i consider the truth yeah. is when you see it emerge from many voices and many backgrounds and and they're all saying the same thing that to me is where the truth is and and when it comes to ancestors and angels and there's there's yeah. it's very broad spectrum where people argue about words and names and titles yeah, and and structures and all yeah. but I think that the bottom line is that there's definitely a divine realm of support. <laughs> yeah, most likely. <laughs> yeah. It feels, uh, yeah. That's a reasonable assumption on some level and most likely true. And when we, when I, when we think of an- ancestors, one way to look at our ancestors and one way to honor our ancestors is to really get in touch with our own subconscious mind. Because mm-hmm. some of these beliefs we have in our subconscious have been handed down from our ancestors mm-hmm. over the years. Probably, yeah, exactly. Possibly, you know, 100,000 years ago, the same belief systems are have just been handed down and are present within us. And for us to honor that, I believe we need to take a look at those beliefs and see which ones fit us, mm-hmm. which ones work for us now, which ones are beneficial for us, and which beliefs are... In fact, unproductive at this point Mm -hmm. in time and having Mm -hmm. the wherewithal to identify the the subconscious beliefs that don't work for us anymore Mm -hmm. and to kind of uh, work on reducing those. Mm -hmm. And then if we're doing that, we're actually honoring our ancestors because their old beliefs worked for them. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean the old beliefs are going to work for us. Yeah. Some of them will. So they'd be celebrating us letting go of yeah, what 
may have served them, but may not be serving us. Yeah. And they would get to see us succeed yeah, in finding grow. our own selves. That's it. Grow and evolve. Mm-hmm. I'm sure if our ancestors are watching us, that's what they want. Yeah, I would yeah. imagine so. You want to see uh, us succeed in our lives. and Yeah. Yeah. And that's um, one way of looking at honoring our ancestry. Yeah. So what is this subconscious mind you speak of? Mm, <laughs> the subconscious. Well, you want to think of your mind as a lake. As a lake. And the surface of the mind, I mean the surface of the lake, is the conscious mind. And that's your present moment experience. You know, that's, that's, what, you're seeing, that's what you see and feel right now. Mm -hmm. that stems from the conscious mind, your conscious mind. But the subconscious mind is the majority of the lake. It's the the body of the lake. And the subconscious mind is comprised of four components. One of those components are deep-seated beliefs, which Mm. we had just talked about. You know, mm-hmm. how these deep-seated beliefs get handed down from generation to generation to generation. But that's part of our subconscious. Is our, well, I like, call it our, I like to call it our belief garden. So we can work on growing the plots that are working for us and weeding out the plots that are not working for us. Mm-hmm. But that's one of the components of the subconscious. Another component of the subconscious is our subject library. So that essentially is for you individually. It's what you're really interested in and what you focus on and what you've learned a lot about. And then it's like you have a a library in your subconscious with all the books, boom, 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 on the various subjects that are important to you. Like, for example, somebody's uh, library, their subconscious library might have like a section of sports and a section of money and a section of family and a section of politics and a section of um, spirituality, you know, Mm -hmm. and those, those are, that's an example of somebody's interest library and the interest library or the subject library is limited as well. You only have so much bandwidth. You can only have so many books. So that's why it's important to really take a look at your particular subject library and Mm -hmm. figure out what books maybe you can recycle and what books you can add. Mm -hmm. Like for myself personally, I'm trying to recycle some of my worldly books, Hmm. you know, and but I'm trying to add some more books on spirituality. I've been studying hermetics. I've been studying stoicism i've been you know continue to study the buddhism and taoism and what do, what do you mean books. by recycle the books get rid of them oh so oh. i mean one <laughs> for example one of my hobbies throughout the years has been studying um warfare okay. you know so i actually know a lot about world war 2 and world war 1 and vietnam and korea the Korean War. I know a lot about that stuff, but I'm at the point in my life where I just I don't know if learning more and more and more about that is beneficial for me because mm. I only have so much bandwidth. Sure. Do I want to be falling asleep at night thinking about you know war strategies, or do hmm. I want to be falling asleep at night thinking about um the mind uh, the mind is all from hermetics <laughs> you know yeah totally so i'm trying to replace like some of the you know my my war my war section in my library is still substantial but it's um, it's diminishing as i'm adding like different books on hermetics and um etc manifesting that's a book i'm really paying attention to or i'm trying to add books on manifesting mm mm-hmm. You know, and so those are two components of the subconscious, the the subject library and the um the belief system, the the core beliefs or the core belief garden. And then a third aspect, a com- third component of the subconscious mind is 
um, your memories, mm. your cognitive memories, you know, where you're, you remember the past, you, you know, and who knows how far back that goes too. It could go, if you believe in past lives, it might, the real, in the really deep, um, hidden part of the subconscious, there might be memories of past lives, even stuff like that, or the spiritual world or stuff like that. Mm-hmm. could be in your memory, the memory section of your subconscious. And then the the fourth um, aspect of the subconscious, the fourth component of the subconscious is the muscle memory, mm. which is really interesting. It's sort of, and you, the way to um, think about that is um, when you're walking, you don't have to think. Lift the leg, bring it forward, drop it. Down. It's like, no, your body knows how to do it. Already, it's just a muscle memory that takes over. When you say, I want to go from here to there, and the muscle memory, which is in the subconscious, takes over. Another way of looking at that is when you're driving a car. A lot of what's happening is the muscle memory is actually driving the car. Mm-hmm. Your, your hands know how to turn the wheel and keep it in line. And your mind can be fantasizing about something else while you're driving. Mm-hmm. And it all seems to work somehow. Yeah. I know that when I was studying trauma, that that's called procedural memory. It's, um, I, I don't know if it combines the two, the cognitive mind and the memory, muscle memory, but it is the procedure that gets etched in the mind and that gets affected the most by trauma because someone yells at us, we have a procedure that we go through, and then we etch that procedure into our memory, into our subconscious, and then yeah. the next time a voice is raised, yeah, you we react. just go into that procedure because yeah. that was how we survived before. Yeah. So it, that's the most affected part of the brain is where the procedural memories are held for trauma. Well, I mean, it, trauma could really deeply affect the belief system as well. Right. Oh, yeah, and, totally. And, you know, you're the totally. subjects that you're thinking about. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, yeah, but the, the, the muscle memory is a, it's, it's really interesting because it is the fourth component of the subconscious, but it's a really easy component to work on, mm-hmm. I've noticed. Like, if, if I'm really struggling in my mind, for example, I'll go into a, an optimal breathing kind of technique where I'm breathing in and I'm feeling my ribs expand and I'm slowly exhaling and lengthening my exhale and I'm trying to develop that type of breathing. I'm trying to implant it into my muscle memory Mm -hmm. as far as this is how you deal with stress as you go into this type of breathing. Mm -hmm. So I'm implanting a a new procedural memory Mm -hmm. Into into my subconscious through this training that I'm doing. Sure. But muscle memory is a, is a really it's an easy one to go after mm-hmm. because yeah. it's you know I I can I am able to expand the ribs my ribs when I breathe if I think about it. Mm-hmm. Doing it right now. Ultimately, I, I want to do it so much where it's just my habitual breathing pattern. That's the goal to really have it ingrained into my. Muscle memory. Yeah. What goes through my mind is how you've been (laughs) telling me about how I breathe in the morning. Oh, yeah. (laughs) And so I'm somebody who I am healing PTSD actively. I'm really working towards healing my PTSD. And I've been working on it since before I knew what PTSD was. So I've basically been working on this for 20 years of my life now. Yeah. Maybe more. Yeah, I think it's more at this point than <laughs> 20 uh-huh. years. And I'm finally getting there. And I'm, yeah. I'm it's like I'm polishing the edges. It's, yeah, I'm nice polishing job. the rough spots, you know. Mm-hmm. And so one day Monty, he says to me oh, in the middle of the day, he's like, so I want you to know how you breathe in the morning when you wake up. Can you give an example? Because you breathe yeah. louder than me. It was really yeah. funny. Well, <laughs> yeah. And this is when it's the room is uh, chilly. It's cool. 
And, oh, okay. Uh, yeah, that, that's part of it. Okay. <laughs> and that kind of that can, uh, at times, you know, you correct me if I'm wrong, Jay, but that can trigger you. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so <laughs> I was listening to the breathing and what it was, it was she got up, you know, and she walked around the room and she, it's like she's breathing in, <gasps> hold. Like that. I mean, over and over and over again. Imagine that for like three, four, five minutes, which I mean, just that type. I think it's funny. Well, it's interesting from the perspective of, you know, I I work with power breathing and stuff, which is a way to stay warm when it's cold. Like I'll go outside without my shirt on when it's cold out and do power breathing, which is essentially the opposite of the breathing you were doing. (laughs) Power breathing is like deep breaths and... Like that, right? And that's the way to stay warm. (laughs) But you were doing the breathing that would just ensure that you feel as cold as possible, (laughs) right? That's what you were doing. And that was, if you examine it. It was super subconscious because I was not paying, I did not notice That's your muscle memory of how to deal. With cold. Yeah. And that's part of your belief system is I hate the cold. I can't handle it. I just freeze right away. It makes me really unhappy, right? (laughs) I hate it. But then because of that belief, you alter your breathing. So you really do hate it right away. <laughs> <laughs> and you really do get cold right away. <laughs> yeah, totally. It's so funny. Yeah, so <laughs> I've been trying. I've been working on it. And now I can catch myself <laughs> That's awesome. sometimes. Sometimes uh-huh. I don't. But sometimes I, I notice that I start to hold and then I exhale. And yeah, okay. And then take a big breath. But that's that's one of the things about procedural memory is it's really hard to notice on your own. Mm. It really helps to have someone to reflect to you like, hey, I noticed that when you start getting that distant look in your eye, you don't breathe fully. And, yeah, yeah. Or I notice when you start to get anxious, you really breathe shallow and fast. Yeah, and, yeah. Yeah, which, it, I mean, is true for basically all of us. And I should right. say, you know, that your 20 years of training, a lot of it was breath work. Yeah, I know. Through the <laughs> yoga. I know. But, I mean, that's why you have been, like, like you said, you've, you've been healing. Yeah. I mean, through mm-hmm. through your breath work and stuff. Yeah. So the morning thing was just, like, this minor little glitch. Right, you know, but the minor the glitch is of, part of those rough edges. Oh, I see. If you... I don't know if I ever would have noticed that on my own. Is I guess the point. The reason why yeah. I'm sharing this story is I may have not have noticed that on my own. And because you were able to kindly say, like, hey, yeah. I'm going to give you a reflection of what I've I've witnessed. And I was able to be calm and receive it yeah. and then yeah. reflect on it like, oh, okay, this is I actually do this. And yeah. the next morning wake up and... Here I go. I'm, I, uh-huh. I, hold, I take a big breath. I get out of bed and I hold my breath for like <laughs> a minute while I get my my stuff together and then exhale. And then I take another big breath and and hurry up and turn on the electric heater and yeah. And so every morning my little routine, it's not that little, it's pretty big at this point. But I've for the last um, I'm going on 70 days now. I'm really excited to see how far I can go with this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But every day I get up early and meditate for an hour before I have to do anything. Yeah. So sometimes it's 45 minutes. 45 minutes is about the minimum I'll do. And then the maximum has been 90 minutes on a weekend. And I love those weekend meditations. They make me so happy mm-hmm. that I, I have nothing to do and I'm just so happy about that but you know during the week I've got things to do and people to see and I can get that 45 minutes to an hour in and it's it's helpful it's been helping me the synchronicities in my life are are really honing in I'm Mm -hmm. seeing so much things are happening strategies are being created plans are being made and it's like whoa and I'm feeling better in my body my pain is being reduced I feel more confident that I am healing my muscles and my bones and 
my joints and I'm, I'm going to be okay. And yeah, yeah, it's like, I am more pain free in my late forties than I was as a 20 year old. Mm -hmm. So that's like saying a lot. (laughs) Yeah. Well, good job. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So figuring out that I was breathing like this before I walked to my meditation was like very interesting. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, the habitual, like, morning, cool morning breathing. Yeah, I wonder if it's just any morning. I have no idea. I don't think so. No? Okay. No, I think if it's war- if we're on vacation. and <laughs> It's warm so, Yeah, you're not breathing that way. <laughs> <laughs> I think it might have something to do with getting up so early. I don't know. I just think it's, ha- I think, it, it, okay, let's just go back to the subconscious, mm-hmm. you know, that's like a... Well, which a procedural memory, or that's like muscle memory right there. When it's cold, you're going to breathe this way mm-hmm. in the morning. Mm-hmm. Hmm. And then your your belief that that is part of that, the belief is that I just hate the cold. Mm-hmm. No matter what, I hate the cold. I get cold really easy. I get cold immediately, absolutely. The second I get out of bed, I'm going to be freezing. <laughs> okay, that's like the belief in the in the the library of your interests, your mm-hmm. subjects, you have like five or six books on how you hate the cold. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I hate the cold because of this and this and this and this and this, and, you know. Wanting to be a snowbird. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. dream of being a snowbird. Yeah, and it may just happen. Just for three months a year. It's manifested. Right, I'm just saying that's like in my interest library, oh, imagining yeah, 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 yeah. that I'm a snowbird for yeah. January, February, and you'll probably March. get there once you can really just embrace the cold and accept it. Yeah, I mean, and I've gotten a lot like, better. Okay. Gotten you a go. lot better. I've been up north now for 25, 25 years, yep. and yep. it's it's it's. It's about half my life now. Yeah. Um, and it's still odd. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, a lot of people hold on to beliefs their entire life. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. and, um, but that's part of being mindful is to really delve into our own belief systems, mm-hmm. you know, in our own. And work with it. Work with it. If if it's not if it's not productive, shift it. Like I said, the interest library or the subject library is kind of an easy one to look at. Mm-hmm. And just where does your mind wander to when you're, you know, when you have some free time? What do you what do you think about? And mm-hmm. and is that beneficial? It might be. You know. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, I think about music or. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I just, I'm speaking for myself. I can get caught in old ruts for mm-hmm. sure. That's something I work against Yeah, all the time. Not all the time, a lot of the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so um, I think with all of this, if you want to just um, touch on hermetics for a moment and then we'll okay. share our The Mind is All meditation. Yeah, hermetics is a, Ancient philosophy, mm-hmm. ancient, probably 2,500, started 2,500 years ago. Um, the basis is the mind is all, the mind is all. And, uh, you know, and that's like the universal mind mm-hmm. is all. And we can, as humans, we can tap into that if we get our minds right essentially. And we have to earn it through not cluttering our mind with garbage, I guess, Mm -hmm. at least according to hermetics. You know, we need we need to have a fairly clear and balanced mind and then follow the hermetic beliefs of, you know, there's a there's a number of them. Um, one of them is as above, so below. And, then, and then that means, well, one interpretation of that is like the spirit world is similar to this world. Mm. Yeah. That's scary. Yeah. <laughs> it is, but it isn't. But it, I mean, it's, it's like this world, but more evolved probably. Okay. Yeah. And uh, another 
Another belief is vibration is everything. Mm. I mean, this is 2,500 years ago, and they're saying energy is everything, Mm -hmm. which is what physics is coming around to now. Mm -hmm. If you break some matter down, according to modern physics, what's left? It's like energy. Mm -hmm. So vibration is everything. Thank you, hermetics. You know, they they identified that 2,500 years ago. And they also talk about how transmutation of the mind is possible. And what that means is that if you're having difficulties in your mind, you can use that energy and transmute it and turn it into an opportunity. Mm-hmm. You know, and one way to think about it, uh, <clears throat> I've been talking about this a little bit at work. It's when we're craving, for example. Mm-hmm. Let's say we're let's say somebody's addicted to whatever it is. We're all addicted to things, by the way. Mm-hmm. So I'm just we're all in gonna, recovery. Yeah, we're all we're all in recovery. Yep. You know, I mean, we can even be addicted to unproductive thinking patterns, mm-hmm. you know, blaming others, hating anger. others. Yeah, I'm addicted to anger. Yeah, right. So we get, we can all, we're all addicted to certain things. But when we come up against an addiction and we, we what happens if we don't have the thing, we, we, we begin to crave. Mm. We mm-hmm. begin to crave. The mind craves. And when the mind craves, if it's really craving, if it's you're really addicted to something and you're really craving it, the the energy, the electricity in the mind is just like chaotic. It's just like, you know, I need this, I need this, you know, that kind of feeling that, and a lot of times we just cave in, you mm-hmm. know. But if we use hermetics and we try and harness that energy, and what I'm suggesting is that people, when they're craving and their mind is agitated, they, in their mind they say the, the phrase n- neutral mind, mm. and then they imagine a ball of light in their forehead. Hmm. And then in that ball of light, if you can gather all that wild energy in your mind and kind of focus it in your frontal lobe, and then there, you have this white light there, and then you can place in that frontal lobe what you want to manifest. Hmm. Cool. Yeah, so you take this, this, this really negative um distasteful, just terrible feeling Mm -hmm. and you transmute it into light in your mind and you manifest something with that energy. So you just completely turn the situation on its head. Mm -hmm. So every challenge is actually an opportunity. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, That's a nice way to look at cravings. Yeah. Oh, heck yeah. I mean, it's easier said than done, but it's good to to practice and build will. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's how I approach addiction is just how bad do you want it? You know, how bad do you want to overcome this? I mean, I see an addiction like a jail cell. Oh know? yeah. It's, I mean, you're, you lose your freedom. It's true. You're stuck figuring out how to get your substance of choice. I mean, addiction can be a simple as soda. <laughs> yeah, it can or be your as cell phone. as your phone. Yeah, yeah. and like, yeah. so there's this choice that you have to make, and it's kind of like what you're saying where you harness energy, and it's like you want it so bad yeah. that you make this choice that I'm done, I'm going to figure this out. And this choice is so big in your your interest library that it just kind of shifts the books right away you know like oh, yeah, it's and true. it's like how do i wean how do i be done with this you know mm. like quitting sugar was one of the hardest things i've ever done and right now i can't say that i'm clean from sugar <laughs> but um whenever i do decide to quit sugar it's a very big choice inside and it's usually because i'm sick and And I know the process of getting well and it's cutting sugar out. And there's the choice inside. I want to be well. And that choice is so big that I'm able 
to not look at the chocolates. I'm able to not buy ice cream or cake or cookies. You know, I'm just like really able to just like, no, I am cleaning this side out, you know. And so I think that's how I perceive what you're saying about the energy is, is just making that choice so strongly within yourself that the cravings don't matter and you're just like, I am above this. Hmm. And when you're talking about sugar, they say that sugar is as addictive as cocaine. So if somebody tries to convince me that kicking a sugar addiction is like not as big as kicking some other substances, I I just have to disagree because our bodies and plus it's legal. You can buy it anywhere, you know, like and and there you you there's no alcohol breathalyzer for sugar you know like sugar is the hardest addiction for most people and i think that a lot of that is just the the desire to quit is just not there you know so i i guess my point is i guess saying i understand that choice and how big it is and how hard it is especially when it's not even considered a bad thing in this culture. <laughs> so on that night note, I'm, I apologize for rambling. We are going to shift to a beautiful meditation or trance song that yeah. we created um, recently with our uh, friend, Jesse. She uh, has been playing music with us lately. So she is here with us with this meditation. Yeah. And I just suggest going on with your day or sit back and chill and feel this song because it's really quite beautiful. Do you have any thoughts about it? Yeah, this song is... uh this is the first time we we ever played this song. Yeah, we made we it up. To record. Yeah, we made it up on the fly. <laughs> yeah. And um it it really it seemed to work out. It you know, we're we're trying to figure out what to call our music and maybe conscious trip hop. Yeah, maybe a possibility. That's what someone told us recently. Yeah, so yeah, enjoy. Just relax and uh have fun with this. And thank you, Jesse.
So I'd like to talk a little bit about thankfulness with Thanksgiving right around the corner. Mm, for sure. And it, it's this is a super easy mindfulness on the fly tip mm-hmm. that if it resonates with with you, it's it can be a real successful, a very successful way at um, helping to reprogram the subconscious belief system, and it, it's it's a way of growing the plot of gratitude in your subconscious belief system, and it's simply a very simple practice, hundred percent cognitive practice, just takes place in the mind, and it's just repeating the phrase "thank you." Mm-hmm. And um, my suggestion is to just try and if if this resonates with you, just try and say thank you at least 100 times a day during good times, during bad times, during neutral times. And the idea is the more you say thank, when you say thank you, what you're doing is you're setting your conscious mind, your subconscious well, consciously you're saying thank you and you're building this. You're growing the plot of gratitude in your subconscious. And what happens in the conscious mind as you say it is your mind begins to seek reasons to fulfill that statement. So your mind will start searching around for reasons to be grateful. Mm-hmm. At, least, at least that's how it works for me and a lot of other people. And for example, I, I know I've said this before, but I'm just going to say it again. I was in the dentist chair getting my tooth drilled, and I was like, I'm not going to say thank you. This is really a drag. But I was like, ah, just do it, just for an experiment. Just start, say it, you know. And so I started saying thank you, and within two seconds, within three seconds, my, the suffering, my suffering went from an eight to a four because it, it set my mind off really seeking reasons to be grateful Mm-hmm. And it was obvious. There were obvious reasons to be grateful at that moment. But once I started focusing on that, my suffering was relieved, essentially. So, And I do believe that through one way to get something into the subconscious mind is just repeat it over and over and over and over and over again. Mm-hmm. And that's the way advertising works, et cetera. <laughs> yeah, I, I have propaganda to. as well. <laughs> I have to uh, just share that I also did this recently at the dentist and I got so grateful. I was in this, I refused Novocaine and so I was like really working on my breath and I went into gratitude and I got so blissed out on gratitude and just the pain that I was going through <laughs> that I I started to tear up with joy oh my God. and I was afraid that the person was going to think I was in pain. So I like quickly pulled myself together and <laughs> like, cow. don't cry. They'll think you're in pain. Like, but I'm just blissed out. It was really oh funny. My. So yeah, I have story. to agree that. Um, that it does really help in the dentist chair. <laughs> yeah, and uh, personally, what, the way I try and do it is I try and say some thank yous before I even open my eyes in the morning. Mm-hmm. And, and at that point, there's like a blending of the subconscious and conscious mind. So it's easier to drop messages into that subconscious mm-hmm. right when you're waking up or right when you're falling asleep. Yeah. So um, it's my belief that that's a great time to, to, you know, make use of it. Yeah. And I've been using gratitude in my meditations and uh, in a couple ways. Yeah. And I include the simple way of saying thank you to each of my chakras and focusing on my energy centers from the root all the way through the crown and probably like five to seven minutes on each each chakra and just thinking about the energy of that chakra and and shifting it into a positive flow, being able to observe the shadow side and move through it. And I use just simply saying thank you and blessing each of the chakras. And the other part is actually focusing on my heart and feeling so much gratitude that I get blissed out. Um, that doesn't always work, but I try it every day. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's great. Yeah, they say that 
feeling gratitude is training your body to receive whatever it is that you want to manifest. So if you yeah. want to manifest something and you practice gratitude, that you're basically tuning your energy to that receivership. And so you become the magnet of your future. Yeah, I and love that. I love it too. I love yeah. it too. So the so. thank you practice is can be very profound, super simple. Mm-hmm. I just love it because it's so simple. Mm-hmm. I mean, and it, it really can shift consciousness, mm-hmm. can shift the energy. And um, yeah, I mean, what what do we want to manifest? Mm-hmm. That that, is that's a question. great question. Yeah, ask yourself, what, so what do I want to manifest? Hmm. Mm-hmm. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, and it's really interesting when you think about what do you want to manifest because... I think so much of us really just want to manifest freedom in our mind, like to feel fully in control and not at the mercy of our old patterns. Well, yeah. And just uh, for me, I just want to feel content, mm-hmm. you know, which is a, it's a, that's a state of freedom because mm-hmm. you're free from anxiety. You're free from anger, free yeah. from resentment, irritation. Free from victimhood. Yeah. Yeah. Just like, it's boom. real. Yeah. It's a it's an underrated state of consciousness, contentedness, mm-hmm. I believe. Yeah. You know, it doesn't it's not promoted in this capitalist world, mm-hmm. you know, cuz it's it's hard to profit off of it. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Oh, I well, can just be content sitting in a chair. Contentment you know? is is such an interesting thing because, you know, in my research on marketing and sales and these things that I really suck at, but, you know, want (laughs) to get better at. Um, I have found that the two emotions that work the best are getting someone into elation, like making something funny or showing some kind of a really sweet moment that evokes love or, oh, you know, like... Yeah. A, a, a little kid and a puppy, you know, like whatever it is, ev- evoking emotion yeah. it makes something stick in someone's mind. Yeah. And the other, so there's the, the really positive emotion of love or care or um, some, some kind of a deep compassionate feeling. Mm-hmm. The other one is anger. And I mean, look at our media. Like it, it says, oh. let's make... Let's keep everyone angry at each other. Yeah. And it works. It works. It keeps us angry. It keeps us as divided. And it's very intense. And contentment is neither elated or angry. Yeah. And I have experienced this several times where I've led a meditation or a mindfulness class and everybody gets all chilled out, but it's neither elated or evoking anger or or rage or anything. So they they hardly remember it by the time they get back to their desk, you know? And it's like, whoa. It, It like goes unseen in their mind. It's like all of a sudden they had this good experience, but it wasn't elated enough to really stick in the memory and it wasn't evoking anger. So it doesn't evoke any kind of action. You know, it's like, whoa, this is really interesting. No wonder I suck at sales and marketing, you know, because I'm all about contentment and peace. And it's like, oh, that doesn't work. (laughs) Yeah. Well, maybe we can figure out a way to make it work. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. If it's meant to, it will. Yeah. Yeah, so I just want to thank our listeners out there. Yeah. Thank you so much. And for our local WDRT folk, uh, we will be at the Commons for Satsang on November 13th at 11 a.m. That's a Sunday. Yep. And bring your kids, bring your family, come and enjoy. We have... Uh, Vicki Ramsey will be doing, to, she'll be leading the child care. I'm sure there'll be paint involved. And we will have an hour long of something similar to this podcast, but a little more interactive. So if you want to see us there, we'll be at the Commons at 401 East Jefferson Street, November 13th at 11 a.m. Hope to see you there. Yep. 
Tai Chi is on Saturday. Oh, that's what you were doing. Yes, Tai Chi is on Saturday at noon noon at the Commons upstairs. Do we have any other local events? Oh, yeah. Monty, Mondays at... Cooley Recovery. One? Yep. 1 p.m. at Cooley Recovery in La Crosse is a group open to anyone, and it is... Mindful recovery. Yeah, it's primarily about reprogramming the subconscious. Yeah, with uh, a little bit of power breathing. Yeah, we mix in some practices as well. Yep. Yeah, and that's been a good time. So if you want to come to that and you're in the area, please yeah. come check it out. And if you're online, please consider checking out our website and joining our newsletter. We don't send out that many emails, but... If we are interconnected, then you will know about what's happening. And I can tell you right now, we've got some really awesome plans in store. We plan on creating events in all of our nearby cities in 2023. So I hope that you will join our newsletter and stay in the know. Mm -hmm. Because we are going to be affecting i think we decided to call it the heart mind center experience (laughs) and um coming to a city near you so keep us in mind and consider checking out our memberships and uh, joining our newsletter at the very minimum you could do for us is join our membership so that or join our newsletter so that we can stay in contact and when we come to your city You'll know. All righty then, folks. Many blessings to you. Satnam. Namaste. Aho. Amen. May you be well. May you feel loved. And may you feel blessed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Peace and love to everyone. We're all in this together. Mm-hmm.